You're listening to America's Off-Road Podcast. Brought to you by Off-Road Power Products. Fueled by enthusiasm, a passion for the outdoors, and a spirit of adventure, we drive the industry we love. Uh, Hello, everybody. Oh, goodness. We're recording already? Yes. Well, Hattie. For tuning in to another episode of America's America's Off-Road Podcast. Podcast. Brought to you by Off-Road Power Products. Off-Road Power Products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is an exciting one. I like it. I don't do enough of it. I know you do a lot of it every chance you get. Oh, man. I dig it. We're talking winter wheeling, people. Winter wheeling. Prep, tips, tricks, experiences, stories. It's... Super fun because right out of the gate, when I first did my winter wheeling trip with Coop yeah. uh, one year, I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to go like play in the snow. Yeah, It's not anything like that, at least the way we do it up here um, in the, the Pacific Northwest where we're at. a lot of snow. There's tons of snow. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, well, I shouldn't say someone, it's usually a Cooper, just breaking trail yeah, snow coming over the hood of a well, jail it, on. 40s. It depends on on the type of snow. Like it's, sometimes it's coming over the hood and you're going fast because you're like, well, it's <clears throat> kind of light and fluffy and you just yeah. gotta like hammer through it. And other times you're like, no, we gotta go slow, otherwise you dig finesse. in and it's no good and it's finesse. But yeah, it, it's awesome. Like it's low impact on the rig. Yeah, which is really cool. Which is really fun and. You get to like challenge yourself, and I I don't know. Call me crazy, but the amount of teamwork that goes into snow wheeling is kind of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it kind of almost, at least for us, when we get the four seasons, it like preps you for whatever recovery situations you're going to get into. Oh yeah, because you're going to get into a lot of them, and and usually they're they can be a little perilous. I I, I remember when you came out oh, yeah. and you were on the edge of that, <laughs> that cliff and we had to like winch you a little bit interesting. Yeah. It got weird. I've it had got, a, I've had a couple of those weird. where we're like, okay, we're going to snatch block off of that over there. Cause you can't go that way. And it's going to want to naturally suck you down that way. Yep. We got to pull you over here. And, and I think as far as an understanding of traction and tire pressure, nothing will teach you more than snow wheeling. Oh, that's totally the truth. And just to get right into the tips and tricks portion of it, the the probably the biggest thing I took away um, on the trip that I did with you in my ZR2 was it's food. Food, oh, yeah. Wait, got, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, is tire pressure, and it's oh, yeah. it's crazy, crazy how much just three psi will change will change your traction. Your traction, and there's all stuff all over the internet that you can see where they do test on. You know, they drive with 8 PSI, and then they drive next to it with, like, 5 PSI, and you well, can and see the bigger There's footprint. a tipping point. For sure. Like, you can get to a point where you've dropped too much, and all of a sudden it's counterproductive. Because yep. the trade-off, and this is the overall, like, debate when you're out there, is how much ground clearance are you giving up when you drop tire pressure? Right. And what kind of snow is it? Because some of it, you don't want to give up the ground clearance. Especially on some, like, 40s with 17-inch rim. That's a right. lot. You could drop down a long ways. A long ways. Yeah. Um, but snow wheeling is super fun, Mm -hmm. but there's also that, that little, um, I don't want to say fear, but it's almost like an excitement aspect because one, there's always the potential to break down or break something when you're out wheeling Two, or just get so stuck. You're like, uh, yeah. Yeah. And if your gear lets you down, then what? Yeah. Cause it's cold and it's slippery. It's, Mm. you know, most of the time you're up in a mountain or something where there's drops off, drop yeah. offs on both sides. So it's not there. There's definitely a different excitement factor well, to and it. it. It takes stuff that would be easy in the summer, like a logging road, right? And makes it more challenging. Oh, you, you're part of that um, kind of crew that does that um, trip every year. Yeah, to Lake Elsie. Yeah, and there's <laughs> I've seen so many John well, Snow like the, in his tundra. Oh yeah, <laughs> that the burning snowman run with the mule right? boys. Yeah, like yeah. we have some fun doing that. And and you see this video online of this tundra like at the top of this forest road essentially. Yeah. But he's going 20 miles an hour backwards, backwards like You're dodging like, oh, trees like that. in the ruts and and there he goes. Yeah, it's crazy. But Reverse it's, it's tons coaster. of fun because almost every single time you're testing recovery gear, you're mm-hmm. testing your lockers, you're testing all of the equipment that you probably don't get to use every time you go wheeling in the summertime. Right. You're using 
almost every time when you go out. Um, and we all have that one buddy snowing. that requires a lot of help. <laughs> that was an adventure. <laughs> I, I overestimated myself on that trip. But there's there's a lot, I think, that can be said when it comes to winter wheeling as far as what items you should bring. Yep. Um, I, I know Just watching you mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. the years, when we leave for a wheeling trip in the summertime, it's like, let's hop in the Jeep. My recovery bag's in there. Let's go. And it's just my basic entry level right. orange recovery bag with a 10 foot tree saver and yeah i have four soft shackles that i sure. throw in there and i've i've noticed you're a lot more meticulous when you leave for a big wheeling trip that you know you're snow gonna go. wheeling snow trip. wheeling trip yeah oh it's it's there's yeah. quite a bit more to it snow wheeling trip i have my my base recovery bag because mm-hmm. that's good for winching um uh the kinetic tow ropes are the bunny. They are where it's at. Those bubble rope, kinetic tow ropes are perfect because no matter what size rig is with you, if it gets stuck, you're going to get them out Mm -hmm. no matter what size the rig is trying to recover it because you can just get so much kinetic energy. Those are great. But then, like for me, you always plan for the worst. So I have extra jacket, extra hat. I have um, gaiters. I have extra pants insulated pants and I have good mittens and then some of the other things um fire starting gear right I want to be able to start a fire if need be sure this last snow wheeling trip I went out on we we started a campfire right in the middle of the right in the middle of the trail and it was awesome it was perfect hop out because it was from when we started the amount of elevation change there was probably a 10 to 15 degree change in temperature from where we started down low I believe it. And then went up high. There was enough of a change that the snow changed. We probably changed tire pressure three or four times throughout the day. That's crazy. Just because of the... the, It started getting softer? Change in... uh, Oh, we got an amber alert. I hate getting those. I hate those too. Yeah, those those aren't any good. I mean, I like that they come out and I always feel like we should all... Technology is amazing jump out and i know we're getting look around here but around us but yeah, yeah. sorry mm-hmm. those are never good no but it's awesome that both our phones are on silent and it's like Bzz. and then we know yeah now we know and now there's someone driving down the road that just looked over and saw that suburban and they're like that's the guy get him get him so <laughs> <laughs> snow wheeling that's never a fun text to get god no and Especially they always like, I don't know about you, but anytime they show up, I'm like, literally, I, I <laughs> don't want to jump <laughs> outside and look. Like, okay, the whole drive the, home now, I'm going to be like, what looking kind of for car a was suburban. That? It was a like, blue yeah. suburban. There it is. Jeez. Yeah. Being a parent these days is rough. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, snow wheeling and we got <laughs> night, Scott. Night it's a total totally. sidetrack. I don't remember what, what was I. Oh, no. I was talking about fire, fire starting yep. equipment. Oh, and, and some other, other things that are bringing along. I really like that. Um, uh, silky saw the oh, katana man. the big one because a lot of times you're gonna have trees like this last trip out we had one two three three trees that had fallen from the weight of the snow over the over the trail those silky saws are the best replacement and for I, a chainsaw. you know what this is it's it's always a debate because i have the guy that has the chainsaw with us and he's like oh no i'll get my chainsaw usually in the amount of time it takes for him to get the chainsaw <laughs> that's my argument get the fuel the fuel that's spilled all, all over, over the inside the, of your rig exactly. and smells funky or and you're like, oh my oil. God, I'm, I'm, I'm high because <laughs> yeah. of it and bar oil yep. and gets over to what you're messing with. You've already cut it down with the silky sun. It doesn't take a whole lot. And if it's a big tree, you're most likely already halfway through it. There's Totally. We've cut through some dead- Oh, 12 inch trees. Massive trees in less than a minute yeah. with those things. Yeah, the live. Silky, the silky katana is the way to well, go. Well, not live, but dead standing Oh, recently dead. I mean, they're, yeah. they're still green. Yeah. Yeah. And cut through those. No problem. Yep. And it doesn't take up any space and it doesn't require fuel other than you. Doesn't stink. Doesn't smell. You don't have to pull it 15 oh, times. And I tell you what, I've had a couple of times like we were out. I think the epiphany on the silky saw for me was um, it was a hangover run um, New Year's Day, like three years ago. And there was a tree across the... Um, trail and it was like 13 degrees out it was cold (laughs) and um 
the tree was so cold that hitting it with an axe was like hitting a rock. The moisture had frozen. Oh, yeah. And it just like ricocheted. Axe wasn't doing anything. The chainsaw, it dulled the blade in like no time flat. I was like, holy cow. We tried it with two chainsaws. And that silky saw cut through it in like like butter. They're crazy. It's crazy. They are awesome. And they make them in different sizes, too. Yeah. Like I get the big one. Well, but I mean, like for like, I mean, like it's the kind of the so whole story of my <laughs> life. Bigger is better. <laughs> but you're not going to tell me otherwise. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. But we've got a local, a local <laughs> area that they picked up a bunch of them. Beacon Hill, this mountain biking right. up by us, and they, and they make one called the Pocket Boy. That's only like I don't know. Yeah, it's great for a mountain inches. bike. But you can strap it. But they make a whole bunch of different sizes. But yeah, silky saws are awesome. If you haven't checked those out, mm-hmm. they are sharp. They cut fast. Yeah, and it's also killer. something that I pack all the time on my UTV. And to give you an idea that the katana that Cooper's talking <laughs> it's about, like, it's yeah, like a twenty-four inch cutting blade. It takes up, if not like, longer, that big around, and like, it yay. folds into the handle. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're cool. Um, one thing I like, I fortunately have not had to use one yet, but I know you have, and I know you have experience using them. Is the ARB Speedy Tire Repair Kit? Oh and yeah, I know it's not necessarily particular to winter wheeling, but I know that's always. No, like, I used it. I used it on pumpkin just last recently. Week. Yeah. yeah, those are really cool and yeah. extremely affordable. Oh no, and and we were out on burning snowman. We we figured out a whole bunch of new fun tricks. Oh yeah, with them like uh, like when you when you puncture a tire on a frozen branch. Oh <laughs> shoot! <laughs> and you're like, okay, I got to put those. And any, anyone that's ever messed with one of these, you got the little um, strings. The little plugs. Yeah. You put them through the the needle. You eye the needle, and then you punch it in. You pull it out and leave it in there. Well, what we found is when it's like 13, 14 degrees out, those, they don't vulcanize quite right. <laughs> oh. So something that's kind of nice to bring along. Also very nice for um, the survival aspect of it when you talk about, like, fire starting stuff. Yeah. But one of the guys had a little propane poof, torch. Oh yeah, you preheat those little guys a little bit. That's brilliant. Pop it in. Good to go. Quickest, quickest install and seal ever. Like it comes off the tool easier. It sticks in there easier. Everything worked better. Like that was what saved it. Wow. And and just to play around with it, when I was doing the repair on uh, pumpkin one of the tires, I got a screw at some point in time. Probably driving back from snow whaling. <laughs> All right, who knows? But uh, pulled that out. It was leaking. It was a slow leak, nothing major. But uh, heated it up a little bit, popped it right in. Like probably the, the quickest, easiest, best fix I've, I've ever done. I was like, oh, wow, that was cool. There, it's a cool kit. And it's not a one-time use kit either. No, I mean, you can, awesome. depending on, like when we were out on Burning Snowman, it was a pretty good gash in the side of Jon Snow's yeah. tire. We probably used 10 or 12 of those things no kidding but we That's we sealed it up and wheeled the rest of the weekend yeah i That's mean until awesome. the next morning when he realized that the tire pressure was too low and he rolled the whole tire off the, <laughs> i was like oh well that doesn't work but which brings up the conversation of beadlocks beadlocks <laughs> yep yep probably a good thing to For invest in if you're gonna do some snow wheeling. wheeling if you're gonna do snow. some snow wheeling yeah beadlocks are a worthwhile investment because you will be dropping tire pressure and i've had times where well shoot this last weekend i was at four psi which is it pretty insane for a 40 a 40 inch tire yeah. and 13.5 yeah no it's yeah 13.5 13 40 13.50 uh 17 nitto trail grappler which i love that tire those tires are so cool and it, i center <clears throat> sipe all of them yeah because they do better on the ice yeah you said is a pretty noticeable difference huge difference and they they last longer than really yep they wear better just because there's more flexibility in the rubber yep oh you're not like interesting you're not shaving off so much of it so good to know so for my my rig personally the way i set it up one i like to keep it as light as possible yeah which and and i've gone over that extensively on pumpkin there's not a whole lot of extra fluff added to it like i keep it light no spare tire i don't carry a whole lot of tools i don't carry a whole lot of i know how it works i know how it it uh, functions i know what the weak points are and and it it just works yeah. really good so um kinetic energy toe strap which is nice when we were on that uh 
um, burning snowman trip, uh, I was hooked up with one of the uh, Tacomas and breaking trail because it was, <laughs> oh man, let me tell you, it was it was an onslaught getting to camp. Like we were motivated to get to camp, but we didn't roll into camp till two a.m. But oh gosh, I would go as far as I could, and then it would just sink, and I couldn't stay on top of it. And uh, also, would he so pull he you would back? pull me back. That's brilliant. And then he would get stuck. And then as I was going forward again, because I could move again, uh, the kinetic rope, I would pull him out so that he could pull me no back. Ki- and it was just back and forth. And All the way no, to camp. Yeah, there's no shock load then on the on the vehicle. You guys got into some deep snow. Yeah, it was one. It was really weird. It was like it was like talcum powder with no bottom. Like you just couldn't get to it. Oof. So you just kind of like. You just kept going. You'd get stuck on flat ground and be like, what the heck just happened? (laughs) (laughs) The other thing I think, along with those kinetic ropes, that is a must-have for winter wheeling is or snow snow wheeling. Not not obviously, hopefully. A shovel. Hopefully you've got a winch. Snatch blocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Just like you had mentioned. In case you got a, like, side pull. Totally, because there's so many... When I got stuck when we were going, it, it was a fairly flat, straight road, but I was breaking trail in a smaller rig. And, and it, it turned completely <laughs> to ice under the tires. Didn't work so wait well. Turned into ice, and I'm turtled. And every time we pulled straight backwards, I just started sliding <laughs> closer towards to the, the edge. edge. So, and not, not just one. Get, like, three snatch blocks so yeah. you can take full advantage of not only the mechanical advantage with the winch and you're in snow and you're yeah. pulling against that. But you can set up whatever pole you need to do. Um, winch extensions, too. Winch extensions are an awesome one, um, which is, I think, kind of one thing that we've just added to our arsenal and our... No, we've had it. It's been in all of our recovery bags have winch extensions. I think we have 200 foot For the UTVs, too. Well, for the, well, the UTVs, especially because those winches are smaller. They yep. don't hold a, a whole lot. I think they're... <laughs> 30 feet or something. Yeah, it's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's not a whole lot. You're like, oh, wow, we're already at the end. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm not even a quarter of the way to where I need to anchor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which, speaking of winch extensions, soft shackles. Because they're where it's at. Not only is it just where it's at, but like, don't bring, and I'm not bashing on the metal clevis, clevis but some I've had you, the I've more had, a metal you can eliminate yeah. in that, it's weight. less, not only less weight, but less projectiles. If something does fail, mm-hmm. you know, I'd rather have a piece of rope. I don't know how many time I've pulled a metal clevis out to go and use and the eyelet that's on the, the vehicle that I'm anchoring to the clevis won't even fit through it. Right. I'm like, Oh, well that sucks. Yeah. That's pointless. That's the, a paperweight. The bubber rope soft shackle. Every is time. Way. And they have so many different versions of it. Now you can get yep. super heavy duty ones. Um, you can get UTV rated ones. Um, Which, uh, let's be real. The UTV rated ones, with the <laughs> exception of the size, are probably strong enough to handle the full size vehicles. It's like crazy. it's crazy, crazy how much strength they have. Yeah, and you get one, and it's like it's rated for like fifty five thousand pounds, and you're like, and you're like what? I bought this for my nine thousand pound truck. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. So those are awesome to have um, along with all that. But I, I think recovery is a big. Oh, for sure. A big one when you go out snow wheeling. Yeah, not getting stuck permanently is always good. I don't yeah. like freezing. And and as much as, like, even the max tracks, there's there's certain times where you just get to a point where you have to get the winch out and you have to pull somebody yeah. because there's you just get so deep in that snow that that's kind of what happened with and they me. And they don't do anything. They don't, yeah, it's just you are so turtled on the I snow. I think that was fun, though, because um, – we learned a lot about those max tracks that day. Yeah. They're very, very awesome tool to have. There's a learning rig. curve with them, though. For sure. There definitely is. And it worked really good as a shovel. I was surprised at that. You can move a lot of snow quick yeah, with those max tracks. Snow. Yeah. They definitely have multi-purpose to them. I carry a little snowmobile shovel, a little collapsible aluminum one. Doesn't weigh a whole lot. Just as a... That's the nice thing is with so with stuff like that, you can break ice and stuff if you need to. Right. Um, I mean, if as long as the snow is light and fluffy, um, Max Tracks can dig pretty quick with those. But yeah. if it's icy, yeah, you're definitely going to want to have a shovel with you. No, you're going to want a winch. And a winch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Snow Wheeling, sponsored by Warren. 
<laughs> go prepared. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I Have you ever snow wheeled with howitzer? Uh, yes. Yeah, that would be a fun truck because that thing is like, talk about the ultimate like yeah, recovery rig and everything, but right, cause granted, you know, it's 10,000 pounds. And rear, but but yeah, 10,000 pounds. That's a heavy truck. Oh, my gosh. But I, I would imagine a front end weir, weir, a weir rear, winch. <laughs> rear winch <laughs> would be pretty rad to have when you're out right. snow wheeling. Yeah, for pulling uh, ZR2s up behind you. That's me. Yeah, that's me. Uh -huh. too, getting Sometimes you got to pull your buddy up the hill. Towed up the road. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else you got with snow wheeling? Whether whether uh, recommendations? Do it. Do Go you play. Have? Go do it. It is fun. It it for me it was that the excitement level, and not only going up, but even coming down. It's the, something different. Everything changes. Um, and like you said too, you're really like putting your skills to the test. Yeah. Like you, you could go do any trail you want when it's nice and dry and oh, sticky yeah. and grippy, um, but you come up, it, it go to anywhere where there's snow and it, you have to drive completely different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and like this last Saturday we went to, uh, we we're going to Bloom Peak, and uh, at the bottom of the hill it was all slushy and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a long day. This is gonna be rough. <laughs> And uh, we were aired down. I think I started off at uh, oh, 8 PSI. I was like, yeah, we'll start here, see see what it feels like. Knowing good and well, I was probably going to end up changing tire pressure. And about halfway up, the snow changed and dropped it a little bit more so I could stay on top of it. By the time we got to the top, we'd gone through the slushy melted snow to the had been melted and refrozen kind of snow oh, into no. the haven't ever melted we are completely talcum powder type snow Just. like if you get any tire spin you will sink <laughs> um which was kind of comical because uh well lenny was with us <laughs> and he had an ls and like 43s or something and he was so stuck all the time <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw a photo of that. Yes. Yeah. I think everyone saw that photo. <laughs> with the this nice sweet JL and a JK. He was in his JK with the Bubba LS headed back two. to the LS three. Six point two liter. That's red. Cool Jeep. Sounds awesome. Those tires gotta go. But <laughs> those tires were not the right tire. Well that I mean We had them at three PSI and they were barely bulging. I'm like, oh my gosh, those are so hard. Thick. Yeah, you're that's what's gonna... cool about Nitto. I mean, and I think it says a lot with their tires. Um, you this is the first rig you've ever owned that you pretty much don't run a spare on it. At least your yeah. first like hardcore wheeling. Well, rig. I've committed to the lightweight. Yeah, like it's it's that whole. You have that conversation. What did I break? Because I brought so much stuff with me. Yep. And now I'm like, okay, well, let me just try and not bring so much stuff with me and see what happens. Yeah, which brings up another good point too that that I didn't really re realize because it was the first time I had actually taken the ZR2 that I have out snow wheeling. I didn't take my rooftop tent off. I didn't take my gear pods off. I didn't take your late rack. You had so everything. heavy, but it never, I never really noticed that when I was going down like forest roads and stuff, no. I get up into the snow and there's people just walking around me because I'm so heavy. You're anytime sunk. I just sink anytime I get any momentum. Yeah. So it, it, that brings up a good point. If you if you have the capability to lighten your rig, definitely do it before you go snow wheeling, especially if you know you're going to get into some deep snow. It's yeah. just going to make your life 10 times easier. And I, I, it's one of those things like different experiences make you better all around. For sure. So the more like uncomfortable situations you can put yourself in, the more skill you have for other things like there are guaranteed things that i've taken away from snow wheeling yeah that i use in regular wheeling that make it all yep easier and there's a whole nother conversation to be had with the side-by-side -side wheeling in the oh snow oh my gosh that that is fun yes just like good gear there's <laughs> yeah. good gear <laughs> You see the snowmobilers. You are exposed. You're you're essentially snowmobiling, but it's not a snowmobile. Yeah. So yeah, and their tires are a really big one. Yes. <laughs> uh, but but a lot of the same principles apply. Or apply. Apply. 
I'm crushing it with my words today. Yeah, you are a lot of the Smith. same principles apply as far as if you can run bead locks, run bead locks. Yeah. So you can lower your air pressure. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a wench. Wench extensions, especially on those like Cooper oh, mentioned, gosh. they have a smaller drum, so it's smaller rope. Yep. Or a smaller amount of rope that you can put on there. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But same thing. I mean, we in fact the day I got stuck, there was a bunch of guys up there. Um, in fact, right UTVs. after you towed or pulled me out, yeah, you had to pull one of the the UTVs. Well, that was out. only because. So when you stop when you're snow wheeling, so your tires, they the friction even on the snow with it being cold, mm -hmm. they generate heat. Sure. So what you'll find is like you'll stop. And that heat will melt the snow, and then you'll sit there long enough that it'll refreeze. Now you're just sitting on solid ice. So that little area where you kept going back and forth, yeah, and just turned completely into ice. ice. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that poor UTV just tried to go on it and the slid weight, right, yeah, because yeah. it was all all sloped off the edge. Yeah, which was not a small <laughs> drop. No, it was pretty good. Pretty good job. It was <laughs> a lot of pucker factor. But it's it's you you made another great point. You do when you, when I finally got home and came back and you know tomorrow's another day. The, the, it is a huge confidence builder. Oh yeah. Like when you get when you do get stuck when you do have to get your winch out when you do have to get into some sort of recovery situation. Oh, this is why I have good gear. And then you get to the bottom of the hill. You're like, oh wow, all that stuff paid off. I actually used everything. My truck's fine. Nothing's broken. Mm -hmm. I'm driving home, and. You learn a ton. Tons. Because um, there, there definitely was stressful for me. Like, And I remember you coming up to me. You're like, Just we're having fun. Just relax. We're not going to. It's gonna, fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. And and it's it's so true. And that that's what I enjoy about the snow wheeling is the excitement level and the confidence you get when you get back off the trail. Yeah. Because you're going to use your gear. Yeah. You're gonna use well, your you had no gear. choice because I would have left you. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have been walking down the mountain like, like hey drop a pin SOS. i'm gonna go get a meal because i can and then i'll come back thankfully we got sammy's before we went <laughs> yes. up the mountain yeah i bring lots of water lots of food just yeah. in case uh extra food just in case yep and all the other standard typical stuff apply that we're constantly talking about bring an air down tool make sure you have an air compressor so yeah. when you do get off the trail you can air this back is up. definitely one of those like we're we've moved past the basics we're on to a little bit more advanced yeah like you don't just jump into you know what i'm gonna go drive in the snow because you, your opportunity of getting you into a lot of trouble is a lot higher and totally and you can get yourself stuck to a point that you're just like i I literally can't do anything. And I don't want to be that guy that is ill prepared and has to hike out of there. Like we have a Garmin in reach that oh, yeah. lets us SOS or text message, let people know where we are. I let people know ahead of time what trail we're going out and when, when they should see me like at what yep. point in time they should maybe like get worried at this hour is the panic hour. Yeah. Yeah. And I have extra stuff, whether it be extra clothing. Like I, I usually bring my Carhartt insulated bibs. I usually have my muckers, my uh yep. my snow boots um i have gaiters i have extra socks i have my gloves i have my jacket yep i i usually have quite a bit of extra gear for that i don't I, the last thing i want to do is be cold for sure if something happens to the rig and i'm out there by myself for a while i want to be able to start a fire and i want to have warm gear on and yep. i want to have food because those are the things that are going to keep you alive exactly and make sure when you hit the trailhead you have as much as you can have a full tank of gas because you're going to lose use oh, a lot more gas, a lot more fuel than you think you will. Yeah, it's it's not like oh, this is only Which six brings miles up long. the new diesel jeeps. <sighs> wow. Yeah, we've got a, an episode coming up on a really rad Jeep JL with a diesel that mm -hmm. uh, we built. Um, yeah, that'll be a cool one. I was just talking about a snow snow wheeling trip today that would be slick with pumpkin the diesel JL. Um, Spartacus and Howitzer. Yeah. Like an overnight snow wheeling camp trip. That would be epic. Mm hmm And that's the other thing too, which I mean we could There talk are a lot of other river. things. There are, but like if you plan on if you're doing an overnighter, like you never know. You could wake up to an extra two uh, feet of snow. Easy. And Guy, I hope so. That would be so awesome. You, <laughs> no, you love it. And you better have the gear to get through it yeah um like i've been in some snow that it's like difficult to go downhill yeah you're like what? which is you should have gravity working with you that should help you oh i've had it be difficult going downhill in the snow and that is 
It, it was almost more white knuckling for me going down than it was going up. Yeah. Because it's just. Oh, well, sometimes it it's a big scary. trust fall. <laughs> it You're like, is. oh, well, we're going That's this way now. Is. But if you want to put your skills and your equipment to the test. Yeah. Go do some snow wheeling. It's tons of fun. And the cool thing with the snow wheeling is you can do it to essentially whatever level you're comfortable yep. at. I mean, check your forecast. See what where there's snow, where there's not snow. When you get to a point on the going right, up the mountain. I just look outside and I'm like, it's go, snowing. It's I'm going. scary watching you break trail. <laughs> oh, wow. Seeing a Jeep on 40s and all you see is just <laughs> white dust everywhere yeah it just depends on what the snow's like but it's so much fun um so if you ever get the opportunity definitely go snow wheeling if you have gone snow wheeling hopefully we threw some pointers your way um but yeah at the end of the day it's really about recovery and being prepared learning more comforts and yeah i guarantee it all gets easier guarantee you you walk away with more confidence and you will learn something almost every time you go out there because nothing is ever the same when it comes to snow wheeling Uh uh-uh there's no other than it's always awesome it's always fun yeah that's the guarantee so if you got questions on gear or uh you're looking to set your rig up give us a uh, a shout give us a jiggle yep i'll most likely be one of the dudes picking up the phone we'll love mm-hmm. to help you out or if you have questions or want us to talk about a specific topic on a future episode shoot us an email at podcast at offroadpowerproducts.com as always, however you listened or watched us, we appreciate you viewing and give us a rating, five stars. We'd love to have it. And we'll see you on the next episode of the podcast. Booyah. See you.